I've done a lot of traveling on trains, and I've often marveled at the streamlined comforts and conveniences they offer for passenger travel. At their speed, safety, and general reliability. And watching freight trains go by, I've often wondered at them, too. At the way cars from all railroads are likely to be found in the trains of any railroad. And where the cars come from. And what they haul. And where they're going. And a lot of other things about how the railroads handle the nation's big freight job. Hardly more than a century ago, over dusty trails or dirt roads, passengers and freight moved on horseback or in covered wagons. Then came a new kind of transportation, the railroads. Here was the real beginning of America's greatness, of her expansion and development in mining, agriculture, and industry. Here was the economic foundation upon which our nation was to build. Well, that's the assignment the editor gave me, to get the story behind the story of modern railroading. And I'm glad he did, because it gave me a chance to go backstage for a close look behind the scenes of railroading, to find out just how railroads became the great transportation system of today. And here's a part of the story as I found it. In the words of the men doing the research that's back of the tremendous advances railroads have made through the years. Yes, the railroads are always looking for better things and for better ways of doing things. Their story of unending research, invention, and ingenuity began with the beginning of railroads and goes on today as never before. My work is on the campus of the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago, in the Central Research Laboratory of the Association of American Railroads, nerve center of the widespread job of railroad research. We do for railroads collectively things which can be done more efficiently and economically than by railroads individually, so that the traveling and shipping public can have faster, safer, more economical service. This job of research is of vital importance in the constant effort to improve everything it takes to run a railroad. Consider the very foundation of railroading, for example, the track over which trains operate. To the naked eye, it looks pretty much the same as it did years ago. But through research, every part from the rail to the ballast, and even the subgrave beneath the track, has been made better. Rail itself is heavier and stronger today to keep pace with the constantly growing loads it supports. It got that way through years of testing in laboratories and out along the track under operating conditions. America's 225,000 miles of railroad is available to try out under test conditions new ways of construction, new types of equipment, new methods of railroad operation, making this the biggest proving ground in the world. Research and experience have led to better design and improved metallurgy. So that today's rail has a service life 50% greater than that of 30 years ago. Track as a whole is kept in condition by machines and methods that have revolutionized maintenance of way work. Men working on track today have the use of machines that often resemble weird contraptions out of a dream. Equipment such as this has lifted much of the heavy work from men's shoulders at the same time getting more and better work done at less cost. This ballast cleaner, for instance. Mechanical hands methodically scoop up the dirty ballast to be carried by continuous belt up into the mechanism where it is cleaned. The ballast then emerges as good as new and is replaced in an operation that is now completely mechanic. But to do its job, ballast must be packed under and around the cross tie. Research and testing have brought about the development of extremely effective ballast tampers. 
Metal fingers hammer the ballast to ensure smooth, even riding by establishing firm foundations for ties and rails. Still another result of prolonged research has been the development of the rail detector car. Mounted on the underside of each unit, directly over the rail, are powerful electric magnets, which locate any possible internal defects in the rail. When a defect is spotted, the exact location is marked for immediate rail replacement. But what the railroads are doing to improve and maintain track through research is just part of the overall story. Another part, just as vital, is that of the vast changes being made in the equipment rolling over the track. From the days of the little old teapot engines of early railroads to the giant locomotives of today, there's been steady progress in railroad motive power. Steam, electric, diesel, turbine-powered engines, and perhaps tomorrow, even atomic power. But to me, the steam locomotive has always represented the adventure and romance of early American history. And the steam locomotive is still on the job, an important factor in providing low-cost, dependable transportation. But the development of the diesel-electric locomotive has become one of the most important steps in railroad progress. I was surprised to find out that the first diesel locomotive capable of pulling a freight train at today's required speed went into service as recently as 1941. That was a great step in the most rapid changeover in motive power history. For today's diesels perform about three-fourths of all railroad transportation services. When I checked into the why and wherefore of this great changeover, the answer first and foremost was cutting down operating costs with greatly increased efficiency. I found that the diesel burns less fuel, can start heavier loads, can pull them at higher sustained speeds, and needs fewer repairs. The development of the steam, diesel, electric, and now the gas turbine locomotive is a good example of how the railroad industry adapts and applies to its own needs the results of the research of related industries. To most of us, there's nothing particularly exciting or romantic about the railroad freight car. And yet without it, the America we know could never have come into being. For the freight car is the moving element in the world's greatest assembly line, railroads. Carrying the raw products and manufactured commodities of a whole continent, the veritable lifeline of the nation. Carrying more tons of freight, more miles than all other forms of transportation combined. That's the day-by-day -day record of America's premier mechanized workhorse, the modern railroad freight car. It, too, is a product of study and experimentation. Much of this experimentation, like testing any other mechanical device designed for railroad use, cannot be confined to the four walls of a laboratory. So railroads and manufacturers have cooperated in operating complete trains, rolling laboratories for road tests, carried out under actual operating conditions, sometimes at speeds as high as 100 miles an hour and more. Here's one such laboratory train with which the railroads test high-speed freight car wheels and trucks designed to lessen vibration and increase stability. Another working part in which great progress has been made is in braking, or the power to stop. I've had an opportunity to 